On the left we have the Fluke 875. This is a true RMS meter. You notice it's quite a bit larger than the Amprobe meter. I've had this meter for a couple of days now. It seems fairly nice. Simple to use. I mean it's a fairly costly meter for the amount of features you get. Uh, we had assumed that uh, it'd be a very robust meter because of the, the cost. My plan will be to put the 87.5 through all the same tests that I put the 101 through. I'm not going to increase any of the tests. I just want to make sure that this uh, meter will survive everything that I put the 101 through. So I'm going to start out testing with the Drake TR4 plate supply. Uh, again, that's about a 680 volt power supply. We'll run it through ohms, capacitance, dial check, and continuity. And we'll just make sure that the meter stays functional while it's attached. And I'll also uh, rotate the knob between positions and we'll see if there's any problems there. And the M510 is just connected through the attenuator. And both meters will be connected to the plate of the TR4 transceiver. Again, this was about uh, 680 volts from our last testing and it'll put out about 500 milliamps. I've been using this 87V for a couple of days now. The knob's a little tight, I guess uh, based on what I saw with the little 101, I was expecting it to be a little smoother. So let's just uh, give her a try here. You can see both units are uh, basically the same voltage. We're at about uh, 710 volts or so. Uh, so I'm just gonna take the fluke and we'll kick it over to ohms. You can see again there's no drop off the plate supply. Yeah, I'll just rotate it slowly between the switch positions. You know, hear any kind of arcing or anything. You can see again like the 101 there's probably a PTC or something that's heated up. It takes a little bit to recover, but, but no problem. Okay, let's functional test it. Obviously the uh, DC voltage here is still fine. It's about right, 260 volts. Let's try it in ohms. This is a uh, 50 ohm, about right, 100 ohm, looks good, 100K, it's fine, 10 meg, looks fine, let's put it in capacitance mode, this is a uh, 100 nanofarad, about right and we'll try it in dial check mode no problem so there you go one of the concerns is that the leads themselves would break down at high voltages so what I'm going to do here we're going to take the fluke 101 leads we're going to twist these up and then we're going to uh, put them into the surge generator you can see the surge generator is already set up for the leads. You just plug them in the side here. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, it's a pretty good tangled mess here. So my plan here is just turn the generator on and let's see if these will break down. We'll use the uh, high voltage probe here and the LaCroix scope to monitor the output voltage. Okay. And we're looking for any kind of a discharge here. If the probes do break down, we should see a change in the uh, signature of that waveform. Again, no change in the waveform. Same transient that we supplied to the 101 run through all the same modes. Again we won't test the current input. This is with a uh, basically 100 millisecond wide 13 kV.
a little bit of DC bias on it. We'll let this thing discharge for a while and we'll swap the leads. Okay, so we have negative pulses. That's 13,000 volts, roughly 100 millisecond full width half height. With the Fluke 87.5. Again, all these waveforms have been applied to the Fluke 101. It functioned just fine after. We're just trying to see if the 87.5 can sustain the same kind of transients and be functional. Okay, we'll let it drain down and we'll functional test it. So the meter is now disconnected and I've started testing it. It seems fine in uh, AC, DC modes look good, the millivolt range looks good, diode check looks fine. The capacitance mode right now, uh, you can see it's 103 nanofarad, that's a 100 nanofarad cap, that's pretty normal. If I do a uh, So one nanofarad cap, the meter's off quite a bit. Uh, I saw this before I started even testing it. You can see in diode mode, uh, dead short, no problem. This is the diode I've actually been using for testing this. This is about uh, 0.5 volts, 0.6 volts. You can see it's about 0.56 volts. That's pretty typical. But here's the problem. So if I attach a 50 ohm resistor, you can see it's roughly 50. This is a 1 ohm. Fairly close. 100 ohm. Looks good. 1K. Looks good. 10K. Looks fine. 100K. Looks fine. 1 meg. You can see here it can't lock into it. And if I leave the leads off, you can see it's reading uh, 500K. Put a 10 mag across it, that's what we read. Yeah, 100K, it'll read it just fine. 1 mag, can't do it.
can see it's a 367k it's thinking this is 100k see in this range it's just it's off see there it's fine one meg out of range it shifts and it's out looks like we took out the attenuator you know unbelievable <laughs> uh, this here fifty dollar meter this here a lot more money very common meter the 87.5 again subjected them both to the same transients you watched me do it took out the attenuator on this 87.5 this guy here 50 bucks still performs beautifully unbelievable I was looking inside of the meter these three devices up here are what failed I've gone ahead and ordered some new ones uh, I've got those ready to be installed now so I'm gonna go ahead and replace those Well, I've gone ahead and I've changed out the three defective parts and we're back in business you can see here I'm looking at a this is a 1 mega ohm resistor here's with a 100 ohm resistor one K 10 K 100 K one mag and here we are with our 100 nano ferry capacitor so meter seems fine um, check it on the voltage scale I'm sure that's fine This is the DC volts looking with a 10 volt reference. This is a 1 volt reference. This is a 1.189. This would be a 900 microvolts 99 excuse me 99 microvolts five hundred microvolts one hundred microvolts So it looks pretty good. I don't even know what to make of this. You got a uh, essentially a $400 meter sitting here. They can't pass a test that a $50 meter will pass. This is what I ran into last time when I bought a Fluke. I, I bought a very high-end desktop one and I blew the thing up and yeah, not impressed. I'm not impressed with this at all. I would have thought that this would have passed every test that this thing would have passed. Thought to wrap this thing up, I'd show you the meter that I normally use. Uh, this is an X Tech. It's a model EX540. I don't want to do a review on these two meters. If you're interested in the specific details for each meter, the manuals are available online. A few things I'd like to point out between these two meters. This uh, X Tech meter here the cost on this is about three hundred dollars on Amazon where the cost on this 87.5 right now is about 412 the accessories that are provided with the fluke it'll come with the leads there's a thermal couple it doesn't use the standard connector it just uses the banana connectors so if you have a bunch of uh, K type thermal couples you can't just plug them straight into the meter that's an additional accessory that you have to buy for it you know there's no hanging hook or anything it's just basically the meter and the leads and a couple of alligator clips 
the x tech on the other hand it comes with this case you can see it's a hard case comes with the CD of course there's the leads you can see here this is the RF adapter for it so this meter actually is capable of tying to a PC through a wireless connection the leads come with it and it comes with this adapter to use the standard uh, thermocouple probes with it and one standard thermocouple probe it also comes with the magnetic strap which is an option for this meter as well for the fluke by the time you add up all these accessories to get what you're getting with this you know it's at least an additional hundred dollars for this meter the fluke's basically a twenty thousand count meter where the x tech's a forty thousand so it's like double the resolution the fluke will measure up to about ten thousand microfarad they claim with a resolution of 0 0.01 nanofarad yeah I've tried to measure lower capacitance values with this this is hooked to a hundred nanofarad cap and you can see it reads like 103 uh, nanofarads this is fairly close if we look at this same capacitor with the uh, x -Tech, we can see it's basically the same capacitance 102.00 in 150 picofarads you see it's like 430 picofarads so you're pretty much down to the limit there of the meter let's just uh, see here with the x -Tech. see it's reading about uh, 201 picofarads for this type of measurement I'd still use my RLC meter it's a lot more accurate the data sheet for this fluke they'll talk about uh, the frequency range for this thing is about 200 kilohertz and I would noticed when I was playing around with it you can see uh, right now it's reading roughly uh, 1.781 which is uh, identical to what I'm putting out with the uh, RF generator here so right in there is the sweet spot it's about uh, 1.57 megahertz before it rolls over well above the 200 kilohertz and you can see here it just rolls right over <clears throat> so here we are with the x -Tech. you can see 1.3 megahertz let's just take her on up this is 2.77 megahertz here's a 5.5 megahertz here's 11 megahertz 22 megahertz 44 megahertz let's just see where it'll uh, fail at right about here so 71.8 megahertz this thing's good for quite a bit better range I didn't buy the meter for frequency counter it's just uh, I'm amazed how much difference there is between the two meters for this function Another nice feature with it, you can see it's got a 4 to 20 milliamp and it'll read out in percentage. So if you're doing industrial work and you use a lot of 4 to 20 sensors, it's a pretty cool feature. It does the same min-max that uh, the Fluke does. I would like to show a key feature that's available on this x -Tech that Fluke doesn't make available on a lot of their meters. As a matter of fact, Fluke only has this feature on two of their meters that they offer. I'm going to take a wall wart transformer and I'm just going to feed that into a couple of diodes here and I'm going to put the meter across these two here so all I'm doing is I'm basically looking at the voltage here less the drop of the diodes here and I'm going to measure that with these two meters so you can see here uh, it's a little tough to tell but I've got my wall ward just connected up to our little proto board here I've just got a 10k resistor across uh, the output of our two diodes you can see here they're back to back one pair and back to back on the other see the meters here moving up a little bit so I'm going to call it 1362 for the fluke 1367 for the x -Tech. close enough so this is the RMS output of the transformer so now we're going to change the circuit and the only thing I'm going to do we've got our wall wart transformer and now we're just going to full wave rectify this thing and again I'm just looking at the signal here 
but of course with it being full rectified now we're gonna get a waveform like this right the fluke is reading roughly 6.4 and the x deck is also 6.4 so this is the AC RMS of this but you see that's not correct that's not the RMS value so if I select DC volts and we can see uh, DC we're reading uh, 12 point we'll call it 12.0 this is DC on both meters so if we want to know what the actual RMS value here is we'd say uh, 12 squared plus 6.4 squared and take the square root of that or 144 plus 40.96 which is 185, take the square root of that, and it's 13.6. That's the actual RMS value. We can take that kind of RMS measurement with the fluke. You can see, you just take two different measurements, you pull out your calculator, and you do the crunching. But it seems kind of ridiculous when you've got this computer sitting right here in the palm of your hand. I can set it to AC mode, and you see when I throw the switch here, if I hold down the exit button, which is AC plus DC, and you see, and it'll do that calculation for me. See 13.722, and you notice that was our RMS value that we said initially worth 13.7 volts. So this meter can make that calculation for you directly. And Fluke has a couple of meters that'll do that feature. I'm not sure why it's not more common. Uh, but this meter doesn't do that. You know, I've had this meter for, I don't know, four years now, I think. And never had any problems with it. I mean, it's well built. Would I think that this meter would survive these tests that I've put all my meters through? Nope. Nope. I wouldn't even try it. But what I have shown is this meter doesn't survive what the 101 does either. Again, yeah, would I hook it up to 440? I wouldn't hook this thing to 440. So, no. <laughs> I'm not going to hook either of them to 440. The Fluke 87 here has answered what I want to know, and that's that, yeah, $50 meter uh, can be just as robust as a high dollar one, and maybe even more so. Um, and that's really all I was looking for, um, because I would have assumed with this thing costing as much as it does, it would have been at least as robust as that 101, and I think I've uh, disproven that, at least for this one particular meter, and that one particular 101, that's the way it seems to shake out. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure Fluke could say, well, maybe this is a one-off meter that's weak, but whatever. You know, I'm not going to run a sample of 50 of these to see which ones live and die. You know, that's a little out of the question. But uh, for a one-off test, I think, uh, I think that's a pretty good indicator. Would be interesting to know if that uh, 28.2 would actually uh, survive the test but you know it's uh, is it worth spending the money just to try it out uh, probably not so anyway I hope you enjoyed all the videos I put together uh, I had a lot of fun doing them all I learned a lot myself from doing them a lot of uh, my own misconceptions about the brands and such I think were cleared up at least for me and I'm sure a few of you aren't gonna agree with all the testing I did and that's fine so yeah, hope you enjoyed all the videos, and maybe we'll do something again down the road not related to meters. <laughs>